I am here to talk to you about architecting your Splunk deployment. So there are a few things you want to think about whenever you uh, are just getting in the, you know, the early stages of your Splunk deployment. And the first thing you want to kind of think about is, is Splunk on-premise or Splunk cloud best for you? Do you want to run Splunk on-premise and be in charge of all of your hardware and make sure everything is running correctly, efficiently, um, and then, you know, upgrading in the future? Or would you like Splunk Cloud? Now, Splunk Cloud is a service offered by Splunk that will allow you to send data to Splunk Cloud and they take care of all the infrastructure. They will make sure everything's updated to the latest version. Uh, they will make sure any security issues are taken care of. You don't have to worry about that. You can rest assured that your Splunk instance will be up, will be running, and will have the latest patches. Uh, another benefit to Splunk Cloud is called workload pricing. Now this currently isn't available on Splunk Enterprise for on-premise, but essentially what it does is it allows you to ingest everything. So you no longer have to pick and choose what data you wanna bring in. You can bring in everything and then you only pay based on the workload that you are using. This is a really good benefit for large infrastructures uh, where you want to ingest everything, see everything that's going on. Some of those inputs can be very verbose and it's beneficial to get all of that data and you no longer have to worry about the ingest. You can just bring it all in. If you decide to go the route of Splunk on-premise, I'd like to give you some tips on that. What we need to do is discuss what kind of data are you bringing in? How much data are you bringing in? These are the, these are the things you want to know. We'll just go for an example here. I want to bring in all of my Linux audit logs, which can be pretty verbose. There's a good size in that. I wanna bring in all of my firewall logs. I wanna see what's going on in my network. Now that, depending on how the size of my network can be quite a bit. So you want to kind of get an idea of how much data is going to be coming in. Now you may not know if right now, that is something that Kenny Group can help you find out. There's some documents online that will help you figure this out, but it, you're not alone in this. We can always help you and we'd be more than happy to help you. Uh, so once you figure out how much data is coming in, based on the amount of data and what type of data you have coming in and what are the types of data durability you need, we can then move on to decide what type of installation you need. Splunk has already provided what is called Splunk validated architectures. Now what these architectures are is ways that you can deploy a Splunk environment that is set up for success. If you're ingesting, for example here, the uh, single server deployment, if you're ingesting less than 300 gig and you're just not really, you don't have a whole lot of Splunk users yet, what I recommend for this usually is like a proof of concept. Um, say your Splunk's new to your organization and you want to kind of prove to everybody that it's gonna be a benefit and trust me, it'll be a benefit. A single server deployment is probably what's best for you. And then once you get in there and you start seeing what kind of data is and how the sizing is coming in, and you kind of get an idea of how many users you're, you're gonna be messing with, you can get an idea for what type of SVA might be beneficial for you. So I'm gonna scroll back up here into this uh, table of contents and we'll just kind of go over these things. So we have a single server deployment, which is, as it says, a single server. We have a call, a, a distributed non-cluster deployment. Now what this is, is your indexers are actually what ingest your data. So your forwarders are gonna send data to the indexers. The indexers are gonna take that data, they're gonna eat that data, and then they're gonna process it. And then from there, you can then search the data within the indexer. So a distributed non-cluster deployment is essentially multiple indexers that don't know about each other. So you can actually send data to each one of these and then your search heads that you have will actually point to these and it will search each one of them, but the indexers won't know about each other. Uh, the next type is a distributed cluster deployment. When this is where, bear with me here, the indexers know about each other. So you have a cluster master in there. Now, as you can see, you're starting to get more and more infrastructure in here, which is gonna increase the pricing on how much equipment you need. Uh, you also need to you know, have the people that know about it and can maintain it. Uh, so you have your distributed cluster deployment and it's a single site. So you have all of your cluster in one site. Those indexers can talk to each other. They can also protect your data a little bit better. They can make sure data exists on two servers. And if one of them goes down, you still have access to it. You can still search it. I always recommend a cluster uh, for anything over, you know, 300 gig. Uh, it's, a, it's a good rule to follow. It really helps out in case you have infrastructure that may be falling or if you want to do maintenance in the future. That's another thing you, you should keep in mind is when you do maintenance in the future, you may have to shut down an indexer. What are you gonna do then if you have just a single indexer? You're not gonna be able to search anything at that point. So uh, keep that in mind. 
when you're when you're designing your deployment. These SVAs, there's there's another one called multi-site. Uh, you can see right here, um, and then search head clustering as well. These are all things that when you get into a larger deployment, a search head cluster is really good to have whenever you have you know a, a bunch of users and you need to have high availability on that uh, searching feature so you can keep everything up and going. These are the types of more in-depth conversations to have. Uh, once you get to this point, reach out to us. We can help you decide what is the best for you, but this gives you a great starting point. These Splunk validated architectures uh, can really help you kind of like pre-plan your environment so you can kind of get an idea of what's going on. So as you can see here, like say, uh, you know, say we have a hundred users that's gonna be doing this. Do I really wanna set up a giant cluster of servers uh, to serve those users and serve all this data coming in. And I say giant, it could be a, a smaller cluster. Or, you know, would it be better for my company to go in and, and subscribe to Splunk Cloud so I don't have to manage that infrastructure anymore uh, and then get the workload pricing so that, you know, I might have 100 users, but only five of them are really doing any work. I, I don't want to pay for the people that are logging in but aren't really doing anything. Uh, so it's another, you know, another thing to consider whenever you are talking about your Splunk deployment. Splunk Cloud isn't for everybody, but it is an option out there for people that it will work for. So now we kind of have an idea of, of the data we want to bring in. Uh, another way to help you decide what data you want to bring in is uh, some use cases. Now Splunk has put together multiple use case uh, documents. You can search their website. You can, you can also, you can just Google Splunk use case and come up with a million things to use it for. But some of your common things are gonna be for compliance. You need to keep data for a certain amount of time. That data needs to be accessible for a certain amount of time um, and you will get audited on it. So Splunk is a great resource for that because you can take that data in, you can maintain it, you can keep it, you can still search it if you need to. Another resource, my personal favorite as a, uh, as a recovering systems administrator is I like to use it for troubleshooting. So what I would do is I would bring all of my application data in, I would bring in all my server data, I would bring in all my network data, and if I ever had an issue, I could go back in time and get a good picture of everything that was happening in the network at the time to determine if there was an issue, if the outage actually happened, what was affected, and how to fix it, and how to keep it from happening again. Another thing to think about for these use cases is, do you need it for security? Uh, are you gonna be setting up a SOC? Splunk Enterprise Security is a great tool for uh, setting up a SOC. Splunk Enterprise Security is a nice scene tool that you can use. Uh, there's other tools that, or other add-ons that Splunk has that will help you efficiently run a network operations center or a security operations center. And as you get in further these tools, you know, your resources are going to grow. You're going to need a little bit more expertise on certain things. So they have Splunk On-Call, uh, which will actually be able to help you troubleshoot your network uh, automatically. Uh, instead of spending, you know, resources to go do that. We have Splunk observability uh, that will help keep an eye on your application. It gets so in there in your application performance monitoring that you can start determining issues before they become issues, which is fantastic. Um, I know there's a lot of you out there that want to have your app up all of the time. That will help you keep your app up all of the time, running its best. It's like having a great chief mechanic that can just tell by the sound of something happening. I hear a little something off in that motor. Let me let me do a little tweak here and boom. Next thing you know, you're number one in your race. These things are, are all things to keep in mind whenever you're designing a Splunk architecture. What I recommend personally, you have, you have an architecture that you want to deploy, reach out to a Splunk user group, reach out to Kenny group, reach out to Splunk. Uh, we can all kind of help you. We want to see you succeed. There's so much help out there for this. It's kind of good to get a second opinion on things uh, just to kind of go over your your deployment and see if maybe there was something that a, another person did that you didn't think of uh, that would help your deployment in the future. And you know what? You need an on-prem service and you don't want to design it. We got you. Kinney Group has reference designs. Now, these are designs that we've put together. We've tested. All of the white papers are right here. You can actually get the white papers, read through it, see if it handles the performance or the use cases you want. I guarantee you that it does. Really, you don't have to do any of the designing at this point. We've already designed these. We can work with you and the vendors, get the equipment out there, help you get it all set up. We can get it all running up and going. Um, another thing we can do, say you just want to search your data. That's fine. We're good with that. We can help you admin your Splunk deployment. Say you have a Splunk deployment and you don't, you don't, 
really want to admin it. You don't, you don't have the expertise in house. You have some people that are interested in Splunk. You have some great use cases for it. You know what you want to get out of it. Uh, you just, you just really don't want to admin of the Splunk install. That's fine. We have managed services. We can use the Kinney Group MSP team and we can manage your Splunk installation for you. So you no longer have to worry about, does my person have uh, enough expertise to troubleshoot this problem? Can they foresee issues in the future? How are we growing? Do we have a plan for the future? The Kinney Group MSP team can take care of all of that for you. We'll just work with you. We want to see you succeed and that's it. We are here to help you. We want to make you succeed in your mission. And this has been things to think about when you're getting ready to architect your Splunk installation. Thank you.